If you're primarily building web apps with frameworks like Next.js, you're likely not creating any API endpoints that need to be consumed by anything other than that website. But what if I want to hit that endpoint from another website, or maybe I want to expose an API to my customers? If I try to go to spacejelly.dev and make that same API request, we can see that I'm immediately blocked with something called cores. So we're going to see how we can work with cross-origin requests inside of a Next.js app or just a simple API endpoint. Now to create an API endpoint, you don't actually need something like Next.js. So I'm gonna use Vercel functions, which just makes it easy to spin up and deploy an API endpoint. But if you prefer something like Netlify, you can absolutely use Netlify. If you want, you can use a cloud provider like AWS, which if you're just using API endpoints, I probably recommend going straight to a cloud provider anyways. But to make this easy, I created a starter project, which I'll link in the description, that really just spins up a new uh, API endpoint using Vercel functions. Now looking in the code, we can see that I just have this simple get request and it just responds with hello world. If I spin up my server with Vercel dev, we can see that if I go to the endpoint, we simply get hello world. Now to make it slightly more interesting than just responding with hello world, I'm going to make a fetch request inside of my API endpoint to NASA where I'm going to just return the image of the day just to kind of simulate if I'm trying to proxy data in a secure way. So we can actually see their astronomy picture of the day where it's pretty lovely in itself. All we need to do is hit this API endpoint. And if you kind of scroll down and see, they even give you a demo key that you can use. That's rate limited, of course. But if you want, you can always just generate your own free API key from api.nasa.gov. So if I update this to simply make that fetch request and then I return that as a JSON string, we can now see that if I refresh, I get that response, including that high res astronomy picture. Now, going back to that problem that we saw before, if I try to make a request to that same API endpoint on another website, such as spacejelly.dev, we're going to see again that it immediately fails because of that cross-origin request. Now, I currently don't have a page in the index route, but we can see that it's still serving something. So if I try to make that same request, we can see that I do get a response with that API endpoint because it's same origin. Now, this is a good default behavior to have, because imagine if you have these sensitive API endpoints, you don't want just anybody accessing those. So by not having the ability to make those cross-origin requests, you have a good, safe, secure default for building those API endpoints. Now, if you do want to expose that API endpoint to a broader audience, you can use something called cores, which is enabled using headers. What we can do is add this header to our response called access control allow origin with the origin that we want to open up and it'll easily just open it up for that domain. So let's give this a try for spacejelly.dev. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass in a second argument to my response where it's going to be headers as my property name, where I'm going to define all the headers that I want to respond with, where in my case, I want to respond with the access control allow origin and make sure that you have the dashes in there and the capitalization. But ultimately I want to respond to that with HTTPS colon slash slash space jelly dot dev. But if I come back and try to make that request again, we can see that this time it was successful and we can see all that data along with the response. We can even open up the API request where we can inspect the headers, where we can find that response header section. We can find access control allow origin where we see spacejelly.dev. Now, if I instead try to make that same request on colbyfayok.com, as you probably expect, it fails because I only have spacejelly.dev defined. Now inside that header, not only are we allowed to define just an origin, we're also able to use a star, which is going to say, we want to open this to any origin. So if I instead passed in that star, we can see that it's going to work on spacejelly.dev. And let me try this again on colbyfayok.com. And we can see that it works. Again, we can open up that API request where we can see now the access control allow origin is that star. Now you gotta be careful when you're setting this up to allow just any origin to make requests to the endpoint as you're really exposing any website to be able to make those requests. But maybe that's the intent. Maybe you wanna build a public API, but you probably wanna have some kind of authentication, authorization mechanism in addition to that to make sure that you can control abuse, such as maybe the nasa.gov API where they have the API key that really controls people's ability to access that endpoint. Now, how about another scenario? Maybe you don't want to open up this endpoint to just any origin, but you have multiple origins. The issue is this field here can only accept one origin when you're passing that through. So how do you handle if you want to accept maybe two or three different origins? What we can do is instead of passing in this star, we can pass in a dynamic value. So we can read what the origin is coming from. We can check to see if that's a valid origin and respond with that origin if we determine that it is valid. So how about at the top of my route, I'm going to create a new constant called allowed origins. I'm going to say HTTPS space jelly.dev. I'm going to add a second one of colbyfayok.com. 
Now, in order to actually compare it to something, I'm going to use the request object that comes along with that request. So I'm going to first console log this out just so that we can see what's inside. Or if I hit the endpoint again, we're going to be able to see in our terminal everything that's inside that request object, where in particular what we're interested in is if we go down to the headers section, we're going to be able to find the origin. So let's update this to dot headers, where I'm going to run the get method for origin, and let's console log that out. We're making that request again. We can see that the origin that requested this was spaceshelly.dev. Or if I again try to make that request on colbyfayok.com, we can see that we now get colbyfayok.com. Okay, so what we want to now do is take that origin value and compare it to our allowed origins array. And ultimately, we want to figure out what that current origin is, see if it's allowed, and then ultimately return that instead of that star. So I'm going to first cut this out and I'm going to store as request origin is equal to the headers get origin. And then I'm going to say constant access origin is equal to where I'm going to take my allowed origins and I'm going to say I want to find the origin where the origin equals my request origin. But then once I actually have that access origin, I'm going to take it and replace the star with that access origin. Now we can see that headers is throwing a TypeScript issue here. It's because access origin might not be a string if it's not found in allowed origins. Now what I can do is I can just default this to my allowed origins and just grab the first item of the array just to make sure that there's always a backup value there in case we can't actually find one that matches our request origin. But now we can see that we're dynamically updating this access origin value based on an allowed origin that's actually available. So let's go ahead and give this another try. I'm going to make that fetch request and we can see that it works. If I head over to the network tab, we can inspect that hello endpoint and we can see that we get that access control allow origin of spacejelly.dev. Perfect. Now let's head over to colbyfayok.com. We'll also try it there. We can see that it works. I'm going to head over to the network tab. And similarly, we can see access control allow origin, but this time it's Colby Fayok. Now, finally, let's test this on another domain that's not one of those that are are inside of our allowed list. I'm going to run that request. And as expected, it didn't work. We can see that the header value is spacejelly.dev. And if we look at the network request, we can see that it failed. And we can see that the allow origin is spacejelly.dev, which was that default value because we just grabbed the first one inside the list. Now, just to confirm, this is still going to work on our original origin because it's not a cross origin request. So it's going to just work. But now we're allowed to make those requests from other origins. Now, technically, you don't need to put those other origins inside of your allowed origins, but maybe something that you can do is still put that production URL or whatever that environment URL is in that allowed origins list so that maybe when you're making that request from another website that's not in the allowed origins, it's going to return that production value rather than expose some of the different websites that it can request from, whether or not that's something that you want to protect. But maybe you can just do that as best practice. Now for Vercel specifically, which is where I'm setting this up, we can see that we get a bunch of different environment variables that we can use. We can use the Vercel URL, which is going to represent the currently deployed environment. So if you're on a preview branch or something, it's going to give that URL. Otherwise, you also have the project production URL. So maybe we can add both the Vercel URL and the production URL just to make sure that we're able to open up this endpoint, whether it's a staging environment or for the production environment, if that's what you want to do. But just for my purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my Vercel production URL, and that's going to come from, I can type process.env, Vercel production URL. And again, that's going to be the main production URL, not the preview branch URL or anything like that. So we'll be able to see what that looks like. Where if I again make that request, we'll actually see that that's undefined, but that's because I haven't created a deployment for my project yet. But fast forward a second. I quickly deployed this to Vercel, where if I now test this out using that test endpoint Tani Vercel address and make that request, we can see that the cores comes back with that particular origin. But of course, just to prove that works, let's pass it into spacejelly.dev. It works. And the colbyfayok.com, which it does work, all because it's getting that dynamic origin. But it's a good way to make sure that you actually have that production URL when you're in a deployed environment where we're in local host that so we don't have that available. Now, one thing to quickly know, MDN specifies that if you are going to provide a dynamic origin like we're doing, you also want to pass in the very header and specify that as origin, just so that it has a better way to let the clients know that it might be different. So we can go ahead and specify very as our origin.
Now I have another scenario for you. What if you want to pass in headers to the request, such as if you want to specify the content type of application JSON. Now maybe this is a more likely scenario if I'm using post, where if I try to make that same request, only this time it's the method of post and I'm passing in my headers of content type application JSON, we can see that, uh-oh, it's now failing. What's happening now is we're additionally receiving an options request to our endpoint, and we're not currently handling that. So what we need to do is we need to return a 200 success if it's a valid response or request, of course, to make sure that it's also handling that pre-flight request. So I'm going to export a function called options this time, where we're going to use the request object again. So I'm going to make sure that I type that out. And this time I'm going to return a new response. I can just say json.stringify. And how about status of OK? You can really return whatever you want there. And I'm going to additionally pass in my second argument where I want to define my headers similar to what I'm actually doing for my post request. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those through. But I also want to make sure that I define explicitly that I want a status of 200 for this one. Now, as you can see, we want to make sure that we also copy over that dynamic logic for our access origin. But now if I actually try to make this request where the difference I have is the method of post and the content type of application JSON, it's actually still going to fail. Now, apparently there's some kind of issue with Vercel dev when you're just dealing with an API endpoint that's not integrated into the framework when trying to actually make those options requests. So instead, I'm just going to deploy that to production by running Vercel prod. And of course you don't wanna test on prod, but for this purposes, for the walkthrough, you can kind of see how this works. Where if I now try to make that same request, only I'm making it to that Vercel endpoint, we're going to see that, well, it still fails, but we can see that it's blocked because the request header field of content type is not allowed in the access control allow headers response. Now that's a different error, of course. Now, not only do we have to allow certain origins, now we have to start allowing specific headers. So similar to what we did with our origin, I'm gonna now have my headers field, or that's not capitalized, access headers, and I'm going to define my content type. And I'm going to also add that to my post request as well. But after I deploy that out and try to make that request again, we can see that now it works again. We can see inside the network tab that I have my access control headers of content type where we see that origin that we added before. Now, of course, it's not ideal that we would have to test something like this in production, but again, this can be really translated to any kind of API endpoint, whether it's Next.js itself, whether it's something deployed on Netlify or another framework. Ultimately, these are web standards that really are going to apply to whatever endpoint that you want to create. Now, we're not going to cover it here, but there's a lot of different control headers that you can set up, whether you want to restrict the different methods that are available, such as if you only want to restrict that post and options request. But next, let's get into a more advanced use case for APIs and build a complete notification system with emails and in-app notifications with Knock.